Welcome. In this video, we will be creating this piece of apple pie. Uh, we will be creating uh, the Sculpty inside of 3ds Max using Prim Composer. Uh, we will also, inside of Prim Composer, uh, apply the textures and bake them uh, so that they can be up automatically uploaded to OpenSim uh, using uh, Maxport. The textures uh, that we'll be applying to this are as follows. We'll, uh, this texture in the upper right hand corner will be used to create the crust of the pie. Uh, the top of the pie uh, will be created from this image in the upper left and the filling of the pie uh, will be created from this, uh, pic this image in the center. Uh, and the final texture uh, that will be applied to the Sculpty uh, will end up looking something like this. So let's begin. Okay, we'll begin in Prim, uh, Prim Composer for 3ds Max by creating the Sculpty. Uh, and in this uh, video, I'm using Prim Composer uh, 1.2.4. So let's begin by going to the Prim Composer menu in the Create panel. And we'll click on Sculpt Shape and we'll create an editable poly uh, cylinder shaped uh, Sculpty uh, and we'll start the mesh res resolution at uh, 8 faces by 8 faces. Uh, so this is uh, quite a bit less than the full resolution of a Sculpty which would be 32 by 32 faces. Uh, but we'll use uh, Tessellate to uh, bring that up to the full resolution uh, during the process. So the first thing that we want to do is to get the basic shape of, of our pie. So I'm just going to quickly I'm just going to quickly move some of these vertices into place uh, so that this is, has the general shape of a, a piece of pie. I'm not being very exact here. If you were doing this for real, uh, you might want to have a reference image or create some sort of um, reference geometry to align to. But for the purposes of this, I think this will be fine. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So if we look at what we have right now in the perspective view, we have uh, the basic pie shape, uh, but the geometry is not, is not closed. So the next thing we'll do is close this geometry. I'm going to go to the front view and select the top row and then I'm going to uh, make that planar in the X direction and then uh, again in the Z direction. So that brings all of these to a point and then I'm going to go ahead and weld them. I'll do the same thing on the bottom row. Planar in X, planar in Z, and then weld them. Now I'm going to begin uh, bringing these rows in. In the top view, I'm going to scale this down and then grab the next row and scale this down so that these are, from the top view, uh, approximately proportionally filling up uh, the top of the pie. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. 
and I'll move the bottom rows so that they mat approximately match the top rows. Okay, now I want to collapse um, all of these rows uh, so that it's flat. Uh, so I'll make them planar in Y. And then move that up. And then I'll do the same thing um, to the top. So now we have our basic pie shape. This is our Sculpty. If we exported this to Second Life right now, it would probably look pretty good. Let's uh, go a step further and create. Uh, Right now, this is at LOD1, so it's only an 8x8 uh, mesh. Let's go ahead and flesh it out so that it's a, a full uh, Sculpty mesh. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, set our texture bake size to uh, 1024 by 1024 uh, just so that we see the best possible results. In general, general you want to keep this as low as you can while still getting a good result. And also I'm going to go ahead and change the output stitching type to sphere. Okay, so let's go ahead now and apply um, let's see, first um, let's get out of vertex selection mode and then I'll apply a tessellate modifier. Now you can see if you look at this that the tessellate has um, changed the shape so it no longer has sharp edges. Uh, possibly that's what you want but in my case I really want something that looks like uh, a strict uh, pie shape so I'm going to uh, put the tension on the tessellation operation uh, down to zero and you see now I get my straight edges back and I'm going to do two iterations to bring this up to the full Sculpty resolution of 32 faces by 32 faces so now let's put an edit poly modifier on here and we can see what we have <clears throat> now all of the red points are the points we started with and the points in between are the ones that were generated uh, using the tessellate modifier. So I think um, looking at this I'm not quite happy we have some, ki some kind of zigzaggy um, things here. Um, in order to make this a little bit nicer I'm going to go ahead and relax this a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to select the, top, the center vertex on the top and then press grow until it goes all the way almost to the edge and then I'm going to come over here in the edit geometry panel and uh, open the relax dialog and I'll just uh, run this for five iterations and you can see that that uh, smooths out the lines here makes them straighter that, that will cause our uh, textures to have less distortion in them. And then we're going to do, do the same thing uh, for the bottom. I'll just select that center uh, vertex and then uh, grow that until it goes almost to the edge and then uh, run the relax on it for five iterations. Okay, so that's, at this point, we have the basic uh, structure of our Sculpty. Oh, there, <clears throat> there are, 
there was one other thing that uh, I wanted to do before uh, before we move on. You can see that when we tessellated this, um, we got straight edges here. All of these are in a line, so that we have a rather kind of blocky ring here uh, around the back of our pie wedge. So what I want to do uh, just before moving on is to just uh, move these slightly so that this has a more rounded appearance. And again, I'm just going to do this by eye. If I had some uh, a reference picture underneath here, I could be matching this to the picture underneath. Okay, so that just gives it a much more rounded appearance along the back edge of the pie shape. One other quick thing. <laughs> um, when uh, sculptees are created uh, in Prim Composer, uh, they're given uh, a single smoothing group. Uh, so we can see this if we uh, select the faces. make sure that you have ignore back facing turned off so we've selected all of the faces here and if we take a look at this we can see that all of the faces are in smoothing group number one uh... the smoothing groups have to do uh... control the way that 3ds max uh, generates shadows uh... between and around faces so uh... this will have an effect on uh... shadows that are created uh, along the uh, corners of our pie wedge uh, and if if all of with these sharp corners uh, we don't really want all of the smoothing groups to be the same uh, so what I'm going to do here is to uh, select auto smooth and you can see that when I if you watch that carefully you can see that the the shadowing changed the highlighting uh, along the edges changed and it became more sharp uh, so this is this is just going to give us uh, sharper looking edges in our baked textures, and uh, if we look now, for example, um, at different faces, now we have a face that has a smoothing group of four, uh, and here we have a smoothing group of one, uh, and here we have a smoothing group of three, and these have been assigned automatically uh, when we pressed the auto smooth uh, button. So that's just going to give us uh, better sharper looking edges in our baked texture. Okay so at this point if all we were interested in was just the sculpt itself and not the textures uh, we could go ahead and upload this to Second Life or, or OpenSim. So we select the uh, the sculpty and go up to the Prim Composer menu, export selected. We can call this uh, Apple Pie Sculpty or whatever you want. And since we don't have any textures, materials applied, uh, we really don't want to uh, export textures. So we leave this unchecked and just press export and we can see that it exported one sculpt map and no textures it didn't bake anything because we didn't we didn't export any textures and then if we were to use maxport to upload that to either second life or OpenSim, then uh, this is what it would look like and you can see that uh, there's some kind of funny shadowing along the edges here 
uh, that's done by the Second Life viewer. And uh, if you want to get rid of that, uh, then uh, what you would do is uh, activate Fulbright. And you can see that uh, then all of that shadowing goes away. So that's the end of uh, part one of this tutorial on creating an apple pie sculpty. In part two, we'll be applying textures to the sculpty uh, inside of 3ds Max so that the end result at the end of part two uh, will look like a piece of apple pie. So join me now in part two and the journey will continue.